the Wayne County Historical Society was presented a proposal three years ago by Gilbert Wilson, the then director of the Miss Grace Battle Association. And the proposal was that we do a festival on the grounds of the Brown Manor House. The then president of the association, Amazon Ramsey, uh, decided that we should do that and the board agreed. So three years ago, we had our first heritage festival held on the grounds of the Brown Manor House. Last year was our second, and we're growing every year, and this year with the third festival, we have possibly the best number and the best variety of vendors that we've had so far. My name is Bruce Burke, and I'm president of the Mill Springs Battlefield Association. Uh, the Battlefield Association was formed in 1992 after the battlefield was listed as one of the uh, ten most threatened battlefields in the United States, Civil War battlefields. Association was formed. At that time, the county owned just one acre of the original battlefield. Over the last 20, 22, 23 years, we have acquired up almost 650 acres of visitor centers, two houses, the Brown Lanier House here in Wayne County and the West Metcalf House, which fortunately through grants, uh, donations, uh, help from the state and federal government was able to restore the uh, West Metcalf House, which is the oldest brick house structure in, the, in Wayne County. It was used as a field hospital, just like with the Brown and Near, which is Zolly Coffer and Christian's headquarters during the Civil War. Uh, the Battlefield Association is all volunteers uh, that donate their time and effort to try to help preserve uh, historical aspects of the, the battle. Uh, we help with the, the Heritage Festival, which, which is here in Wayne County. It occurs here at uh, the Mill Springs uh, Mill and the Brown and Near House. Uh, with, with support, uh, logistics, uh, this is their third year, it's wonderful for the county to be able to come in, have an opportunity to see some heritage, and just, and just get them here to the Brown Lanier House, get them to the meal, and understand the historical aspects of it. Uh, we enjoy it, and there's a, they're a wonderful pr uh, partner in preservation, so we're really excited for the Heritage Festival. I represent General George H. Thomas. He was the Union commander here at the Battle of Mill Springs. He won the battle. Uh, and the reason I do this is because I think history has been rather unfair to George Thomas. And maybe I can help that a little bit. Uh, he actually was um, shunned quite a bit because he was a southern man. He actually was from Virginia, a little town called Portland, which is real close to Norfolk, Virginia. Um, he was uh, had already served 21 years in the Army when uh, the war started. And because he'd been in the Army that long, uh, he told his sisters, his two sisters, that he was going to uh, stay in the Union. And they, in essence, disowned him. They actually wrote him and told him that he needed to change his last name, that he was an embarrassment to the family. Uh, they would never speak to him again, uh, even after the war. So they were very vindictive of his going into the Confederate Army. Not going into the Confederate Army. Hi, um, my name is Susan Hughes, and I portray General George H. Thomas' wife, Frances. Well, I'm, you got my husband so got into the reenacting Civil War history about three years ago. He retired, and I just kind of tagged along. Well, um, I have made my, say, my own dress. I've been able to figure out why. I hadn't sewn since but, high school, uh, but I decided when I saw the price of dresses that I was going to learn to sew again. So uh, I have enjoyed this very much. We try to get to a Civil War event in the cooler months. Uh, today is pretty warm, but we're enjoying it nonetheless. Um, my dress has, I have uh, seven or eight different layers on, depending on uh, what I'm wearing, but I have um, an underskirt, an overskirt. And I have um, something called bloomers on, or petticoat, and a petticoat. I have a hoop skirt, I have a corset. I have shoes and socks, of course. I uh, have um, a Garibaldi blouse, which is this, and then my over uh, blouse. So it's pretty warm on a day like today, but cotton does breathe, so it's not too bad. Um, let's see. We're from Nashville, Tennessee area, and we travel all over Tennessee and Kentucky doing these events. And as I said, we've enjoyed it very much. It's been a blessing to, to be able to have a hobby like this. And so, I hope you enjoy the day. My goats are my passion. I got into goats about eight years ago. It started with meat goats and eventually ended 
ended up with dairy goats, and, um, and I ended up with all this extra milk that I didn't know what to do with. So I ended up trying to make soap, and, and I started giving it away to my friends and family, and everybody wanted more, so it ended up, before I knew it, it was a business. Um, I have 10 goats that I milk right now. I have a total of 27 goats. Um, a lot of them are young, and then I've got three goats that I breed. I collect odds and ends of pieces of wood down at the lake and turn them into a stick. I play with them for a while and see what they're going to look like. Some of them are fairly easy. Some of them I just do a little sanding. Some of them I just do a little urethane on them. Some of them I do a little carving. See that one just happened to have a face on it that needed a little embellishment. Some of them are a little fancier. Put a little more work in film, just whatever the stick decides it was. Oh, you just play, get a piece of wood and you peel the bark off and you see what's inside. And it'll tell you. Well, when I was a little bitty kid, uh, I liked getting my daddy's knife and set around a bit of shape. And, and I got to kind of carve out stuff. It's hard to get my face figured out just like you want it. Start Dolly Park. <laughs> and who's this? Who's the one in the blue? <laughs> How long does it usually take you to make one of these? Oh, about a week. Just uh, I can't sit down and whittle, but just an uh, hour or two at a time. And, you know, go on for two hours or two. I used to make one a week, but it was a night, weekend, and I was really tired. I said, boy, I could really make one. I about quit. I was really tired. I was really tired 15 years ago. I was thinking, too. I still make one every morning. This is a uh, shaving board, and you use it with a grown knife to uh, shave wood. And, uh, I made this one, but I have another one over there, but uh, there's an old one. But, uh, uh, just use it for making, uh, uh, helping making shingles. And, uh, David Horse and the Drone Eye. pottery that I like to incorporate with traditional stuff. A lot of earth tones, so I'm very big on natural, naturalistic stuff. Um, I work full time as a fine arts instructor and this is just my hobby. I've, in the last several years I've uh, started working more with clay and uh, developed a passion for it and started out as a sculptor and I like to do like I said, a lot of naturalistic stuff, a lot of animals, and I started out with that, and later started developing the interest for pottery. So a lot of what I'm doing today is on the wheel, and I'm actually doing demonstrations, which is what you'll see in a second. Uh, but uh, this is my passion, and I'm proud to be doing it. So I have some balls of clay made out. I wanna make sure that it's in the center. Throw it down. Challenge. 
challenge is getting it centered so that it doesn't wobble around on me. So I'm going to turn it on full speed. Use my body weight to push it in the center. Slow it down a little bit so I can start putting a hole in it. I make starts out with a ball of clay where I start to open it as you've seen and now I'm widening it. Now I start to pull it up. Making a cylinder. Each each pot is made from a cylinder first. It's the foundation. Just working on getting these walls even evenly thick. And once I have my walls as thick as I want them. I'm going to start shaping it up. And I've been making creamers. And I think I'll make this one a creamer as well. Move around the bottom, a little narrow at the top. I'm a big coffee drinker, so... I like to make a lot of creamers. And I try to make it... Try to make them for the customer, for those who like coffee. I know a lot of them. A lot of coffee at it. So. Make sure I got the shape on the outside. You want to be sure of the roundness, sure that's flowing. The doesn't look lopsided. I like to keep the ridge in it. Just makes it look made. But you don't have just that. I should probably mention that the clay has been wedged ahead of time. Uh, to get rid of air bubbles. When you got it fired in the kiln, you don't want air bubbles, you don't want moisture in it, so you gotta let it dry out quick. You want to dry, out, dry it out completely to avoid cracks and explosions. It just happened many times. <laughs> Make sure that the rim, widen it out a little more. Okay, so I 
still got a little more work to do. But I'm just going to clean it up a little. I lose that tool every time. Turn it on just a little bit. Make sure that I get that, that roundness back. And just go back and reshape the spout. Thank you. I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. And Essentially what it is, you have a creamer for any, any coffee lover. They worked incredibly hard specifically for this festival. Um, let's see, canning the, canning the jams and the jellies and stuff. We stayed up till about one or two in the morning each night this week, you know, canning as much as we could and baking bread. Uh, now the vegetables, they weren't, the, all the hard work on the vegetables, that occurred earlier on this season, but you know, I did have to get out in the heat and pick everything and dry everything. It's a lot of hard work, um, but it's worth it. You know, we like to participate in these festivals, but we also like to offer people locally grown, uh, natural, good food, you know, that's that's our main thing. So uh, this Heritage Festival, it allows us to kill two birds with one stone. One of the things I do, many of the things I do in, in, in life is focused on sustainability. What I'm doing today, what I have out here is, uh, is wooden bowls. I turn bowls out of wood that I salvage from storm damage or where road work has to be done or the tree has to come down or has come down on its own at the end of its life. Uh, I try to preserve the, the wood and turn it into useful objects. Many of the bowls have stories. I've made bowls from logs that go back from trees that are older than this country, go back to the colonial period. I've made bowls from trees that my grandfather planted as part of his uh, part in the effort to restore the ancient chestnut forest in this country. I power my workshop at the house and my small workshop here off of solar panels. Uh, it's uh, as green a product as I can produce. I turn sunshine into electricity, so the same sunshine that grew the trees go into turning them into into bowls. I offer these uh, to people along the stories so that they have a history uh, of where it came from and, and what it's about rather than just something to eat your morning cereal out of or, or your salad. Uh, and uh, you know, I, I enjoy talking to people, I enjoy doing the work uh, and, and passing on what knowledge I can of how to do it and what's involved. Okay, well, our food is mostly poor, and that's all that we mostly do. Um, so you can see how we do mostly celebrities. It's mostly acrylic. We have a few oil, but it's mostly acrylic. This is our first time at the Heritage Festival, so it's really neat. I think we have one of the most different booths because it's painting, and it's called painting instead of like. Okay. The Humane Society has been at the Heritage Festival in the past. We're thankful to be here because of the nice shady location. Uh, we've had two dogs adopted today. We've got puppies and we have kitties all looking for a good home. And lots of people come by and see them. Most of the people already have lots of animals. And we need some folks that are looking for another one. Well, I stay at it all the time. This is all I do. I retired in, in 2005 and found me a hobby and it's turned into a job. So I make all, I make all these bowls, work out about every day and go to shows all, all around within a hundred mile radius of here. Mm -hmm. So that's about, that's about it. I, I enjoy doing it. I enjoy making them. I enjoy uh, the shows because you meet so many nice people. Okay. <laughs>
this, this one's already cut. I've already done all the cutting I need to do to it. And what I would do now is begin to sand it with a coarse sandpaper. And after I sand it with the coarse paper, I'll keep it getting finer down to 400 sandpaper. So here's what happens when you start sanding. Once it does, I won't do, I won't do much uh, sanding because it's making a mess. But. Now, I'm going to take a close look at it. That, that, is a, that is just a wax made out of orange. The juice out of orange peels and beeswax. And uh, a carnauba wax is a wax from a, from a tree. Now I feel of it. It's warm. Put some finish on it. Mm -hmm. Well, I make a different arrow heads out of plants, and I make them out of cedar. This one I'm starting with cedar. Then I chip a lot out of just glass. Red oak, and I sell the sap glass like that. Mm -hmm. That's old TV glass. This is our tree. Some different types of glass. Thankful that so far it hasn't rained, and we will see you next year.